Well, excited to be joined here via Microsoft Teams with University of Texas head coach Steve Sarkeesian. Coach, thanks so much for joining us here. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. So I want to talk about a couple of players that, that you worked with, with uh, Devontae Smith and with Landon Dickerson, the Eagles' first two selections here in the 2021 NFL Draft. I, I guess before we get into them on the field, let's first talk about them off the field. What, what do both guys kind of bring to the table, bring to the locker room? Because it seems to me that they both have a kind of similar core philosophy in terms of the way they go about their business. Well, I think the, the, the baseline is they are very similar. How they get there, I think they're very different. I think both these guys are unbelievable leaders. Um, you know, I think they have a great deal of respect from their teammates. They go about their business uh, in a workmanlike manner. Uh, you know, Devontae is, is a very serious guy, and he, he's very serious kind of all of the time, not nearly as outspoken, but when he speaks, guys listen. Uh, Landon, Landon's a lot more kind of fun loving, a lot more charismatic, a lot more, uh, jubial. Um, but in the end is very serious about what he wants to get done too. But I think in their own way, um, uh, both very serious about the craft, um, both tremendous leaders, uh, both put in the work. They want to be right come game day. Um, but like I said, how they get there is a little bit different. And then, Coach, with, with Devontae, we'll kind of focus on him first. Obviously, uh, just a, a legendary season uh, this past season uh, for you guys over at Alabama. At what point did you realize that this had to be the, pen- the potential to be, I mean, you know, an all-time season for an individual at wide receiver? You know, I don't know if there was one point, quite frankly. Um, you know, Smitty, as I refer to him, had um, – he was really steady Eddie for me for two straight years. Uh, probably the biggest game that jumped out to me was his junior year. We were playing old miss at home, uh, was just a monster game of touchdown catches and yardage. Um, and then when we got into his senior year, I mean, you almost took for granted 135, 140 yards and and a touchdown or two in the game. I was like, ho hum. Um, I, I think probably the game that stood out the most this year was going back to LSU uh, and him being home in front of his family. Uh, just a, a few spectacular plays in the first half. Obviously, the one-handed catch right there in the in the back of the end zone uh, in front of his in front of his dad standing literally right there in the stands. I thought it was a very cool moment for him. Um, but you know, just a tremendous year, and the consistency was just incredible that he brought week in and week out. Coach, one thing that stands out to me watching your offense's function is just he's always on the move and everything, just creating opportunities for him uh, to create those yards after catch. I feel like that will be this case here in Philadelphia, talking with Coach Nick Sirianni and the way that they want to function, uh, but watching whether it was those quick in-breakers, those glance routes, just getting him the ball on the move, and then you just see him be such a long strider in space. What were some of the things that you guys talked about as a staff to try and create those opportunities for him? Well, you know, early on, you know, we're a big motion offense, I think, in general. And when we had he and Waddle kind of going at the same time, it was kind of – we had a really pretty good two-headed monster. When Waddle went out, um, we really recognized, okay, everyone's got to stop number six. You know, they, and, you know, I kind of just reverted a little bit back to my time in Atlanta when I had Julio Jones, knowing double coverage was going to come. How do you keep trying to find ways to help get this guy open? Uh, force miscommunication amongst the defense and then, you know, provide opportunities for explosive plays. Uh, and Smitty bought into it. You know, he, he really embraced it. He went for it. He knew the game plan inside and out. He knew where we wanted him and why we wanted him there. And then he knew the complimentary plays off of the plays that we had kind of in our openers. Um, and so his understanding of the plan was great. His preparation was, was tremendous. Um, and then ultimately, you know, his playmaking ability. I mean, it comes down to ultimately we're in a production-based business. You have to make your plays when your number's called, uh, and he did it at a high level. He's a guy that, I mean, the ball is never on the ground with him. It, it, was that always the case? I mean, I, I know you weren't necessarily there um, with him when he first arrived on campus, but, like, uh, was that always the case with him when you had him in Alabama? Since I got there, uh, he's got elite hands. He's got a huge catch radius. He's got really long arms. He's got tremendous body control when the ball's in the air. Um, but he is that guy at the end of every practice is on the jugs machine. Uh, he puts in the work. Uh, he does not take it for granted. He puts in the work, and I think that's a, that's a sign of a, of a high-level competitor uh, and high-level performer. And then the other big thing with watching you guys offensively is, you know, Mac Jones putting all the big numbers, uh, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy. 
the run game you always have to kind of worry about with you guys. And obviously, the offensive line was always outstanding. Um, and Landon Dickerson uh, working at the pivot there at center. Uh, how important was it to have that kind of anchor there in the middle of the offensive line? Well, it's huge. You know, it's like anything with us, when you're playing center, I think leadership is critical. And Landon provided a great deal of leadership for us, especially as a transfer uh, coming in from Florida State, getting acclimated to, to our organization. Um, I think he, he stepped right in and, and earned instant respect with his, with his focus, his preparation, his attention to detail, but yet also his leadership. Yeah. You know, I think one thing that, that Landon provides in-game uh, he's a big, powerful man, but yet very flexible. Uh, you know, I, I think that was what was very unique about him is, yes, he's massive. Yes, he's strong. Uh, but the ability to, to stay off the ground, really good balance and body control, play low to high, all great characteristics of offensive line play he had with being a really big man. And then, too, Coach, he offers that position versatility. I know there were games where, you know, a guard goes down mid-drive and he's got to step over to left guard or to right guard. He's started every single uh, position along the front over the course of his career. How important is that versatility, not just for a starter, but for a backup as well? Well, it was huge. You know, for Landon, um, you know, he's got a really high football IQ. I think he understands the game of football and why we're trying to do what we do. But again, that that position flex that he provides, and you know, we we played him all over on the offensive line. Uh, but there's also maturity about him. Uh, he didn't. There was no anxiety. There was no panic. It was like, okay, I'll I'll go play right guard now. That's fine. Or I'll play left guard now. That's okay. I mean, it was it was almost seamless when he did that. Uh, and I think a lot of that lends to his maturity. I think he, he's a very mature guy. He's, he's been around a lot of high-level football. He's played a lot of high-level football, and the, the moment was really never too big for him. And Coach, I've heard you speak at multiple clinics, and you talk about, you know, while it is a, a passing league, it's a passing game, just the importance of the run game. Uh, when you have a guy that can be that kind of enforcer uh, up front, and just the, just the importance of the run game in general, uh, what does that mean for a team when they're trying to attack defenses in multiple ways? Well, I think at the end of the day, I mean, when a defense has to defend both the run and the pass and you can create that sense of balance, uh, you are harder to defend, right? And what are you going to do with that extra defender? Are you going to put him in the box? Um, are you going to play with a, with a too high shell and, and be willing to try to fit the run when, you, when the offense has a hat for a hat? Um, you know, but, but with that, you have to have the capability of winning one-on-one -on -one matchups. If they're going to load the box, you have to be able to win those one-on-ones um, and attack people down the field. So, you know, we took a lot of pride in that and our ability to run the football and be a downhill running football team and utilize the play action pass to, a, to allow our wideouts to not just run, you know, you know, short to intermediate routes. We wanted to try to attack the people down the field. And to do it, you had to get them to commit to the run so that we could play action pass and take our shots. And then the last question for you, just you, you mentioned the, the wide receivers having to win one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I feel like even still in, in today's game, we talk about, you know, an X receiver is this, it looks like this, a Z looks like this, a slot looks like this. Uh, with you guys, I mean, you lined up Devontae everywhere in the formation. You lined up all those guys everywhere. H how important is it to have that level of, of positionless football at the receiver position? Well, I, I think it's big. You know, for us, we really don't teach by position. We teach by concept. Yeah. Uh, and from week to week, we try to put the best players in position to be successful based on the concept, based on the, the coverages that we might anticipate getting. And I think Devontae was a great example of that. I literally could have played him just about at any position. Outside of the fact that he can't throw, uh, he knew the reads almost from the quarterback pers per perspective as good as Mac. I mean, he knew where the ball should go based on the coverage that we were getting. And um, he was obviously at a very high level, but when we can teach that way, uh, now we're not putting guys just, just, you know, isolating them in one position that they can play at all spots on the field. And there were even clips, Coach, where I'd be watching him on film and you could see him, like, motioning to the tight end, like, hey, like, get up on the ball. Uh, you know, you're going you're gonna to get a, a flag thrown on us. Just having a full understanding of what everybody is supposed to do offensively. Without a doubt. His, uh, his football IQ is very, very high. I would say I've never talked to a player, a non-quarterback player, more – uh, on the sidelines than I did with, with Devontae. I mean, he is uh, very aware, very attuned, um, can tell you exactly what he sees. He doesn't make things up. If he doesn't know, he'll tell you. Uh, but is very attuned to what the defense is trying to do and can communicate it really well. Well, Coach, this has been awesome. Great, uh, great to catch up with you. Thanks so much for shedding some light on both Devontae Smith and Landon Dickerson. Stay safe, stay healthy. Best of luck to you guys this spring and through the fall.
All righty. Thank you.